Welcome to Understanding Consumer Behavior, and most especially, welcome to week one of the class. I'm Professor Christina Inge, and I'm very excited to have you here as we learn more about what makes consumers behave the way they do, whether it's making a purchase, deciding not to make a purchase, or spreading the word about your goods and services. There's a lot to learn in the weeks that we're going to be together, so I hope that you're as excited as I am, and let's get started learning this week's lessons about consumer thought processes and the many influences on consumers today. So, as we see in our readings, the consumer marketing landscape has really changed as we have ever more choices today in not only what we buy, but where we get our information from and even who we are. Consumers have more choices than ever before in how we express our identity, and we've come to expre expect personalization in the products that we buy. Whether it's companies like eShakti that allow us to custom tailor ready-made clothing to our height, to our preferred neckline, and to whether or not we want a long or a short um, pair of pants or sleeves on our jacket, to products that actually have our name on it, to simply getting ads that are targeted to our needs, consumers really have come to expect that whatever we see will be either tailor-made for us or at least tailor-made for people like us. This means that niche marketing is more important than ever before. There's an explosion of different marketing channels and influencers, whether it's on Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat, or even um, on TV. And we all have chosen particular celebrities to follow or average people like ourselves to follow to get information about the products and services that we want. But the niches that we market to are becoming more and more specialized. Now, what do we mean by a niche? It's a very specific type of audience. So it could be college students 18 to 25 years old who are vegan. That is a niche. It could be moms 30 to 35 who have twins and are interested in organic food. It's that specific an audience. That's a niche. That's a particular group of people that you want to market to. And the specifics of those groups are getting more and more particular, and every group has the people that they follow, that they trust to give them product information, and that variety of channels is exploding more and more. Consumers, the bottom line is, have more choices than ever. Now, why do you need to understand your consumers? Well, it's not just to sell them more stuff. Targeting is one of the main ways to reach consumers, so it's essential to understand your consumers nowadays to connect with them at all. Think about the last time you went on Facebook. Were the ads for things that your grandparents might be interested in, or were they specifically targeted to you, whether you're a traditional age college student or whether you're a working parent who's gone back to school? I would bet you anything that the Facebook ads you saw were for things that you have browsed online, or at least for things that it's reasonable that an advertiser would expect you to be interested in. So, for instance, if you do CrossFit, you were probably targeted with vitamin supplements, workout gear, and healthy living brands. If, on the other hand, you're into fashion, you are probably targeted with sales for high-end products or potentially um, different consumer goods that you've browsed online. So consumers expect you to know them and anticipate their needs. So in other words, if you've been searching online for vegetarian restaurants, you can bet that you're going to get targeted on Facebook, Instagram with ads for vegetarian restaurants. And consumers have come to expect that level of specificity in what kind of advertising they're targeted with. You, in fact, need to engage in this level of targeting in order to stay competitive and stay in front of your consumers. It's what we have come to expect. We expect an online world and, to some extent, an offline world that really caters to our needs. So that's what we're going to learn in this class. First off, we're going to learn methods and strategies for understanding consumers in order to market to them more effectively. Again, partly it is to help sell more stuff to them, but it's in order to meet their needs. Sell them things that meet their particular needs and show that you understand those needs. Now, how are we going to do that? Number one, we're going to look into the psychology of buying. 
we're going to make you a savvier marketer or a business leader by really understanding the psychological motivations that inspire people to make consumer decisions. We're going to look at leading strategies used by some of the top retailers to reach their audience and understand their audience. And then we're going to take that learning, take those case studies, and apply them to real-world scenarios that are going to give you portfolio pieces that you can point to as examples of why you understand the why of the buy. I hope you're excited about that. hope you're also interested in this week's discussion topic. Uh, so, in the readings we talk about the zeitgeist, in other words, the spirit of the age. Every age has its own vibe or overlapping vibes. So, growing up in the 1980s, for instance, those of us who um, are adult students will remember that the spirit of the age was in many ways very business oriented. You think about the power suits with the big padded shoulders, but there was also a countervailing spirit of the age in punk rock. There was also still a very strong and growing environmental movement, so that was the third spirit of the age. When you think about the 60s, stereotypically the spirit of the age was the age of Aquarius, people being interested in peace, the environment, and building a better society. What do you think the spirit of this age is? Is it changing? How do you, as a marketer, tap into the spirit of the age? It's not really just about the decade as well, because sometimes only in retrospect do we know what our decade that we're currently living in is going to be stereotyped as. It's really important for the fashion marketer, or indeed for any marketer, to know and understand trends across society, culture, politics, fashion, arts, science, and technology. So for instance, you might wonder why is technology relevant to me as a fashion marketer? One of the big things we're seeing in the world of technology is artificial intelligence. That's actually really relevant to you as a fashion marketer because more and more advertising is actually designed to be targeted at people based on an artificial intelligence determining that their browsing history shows that they could be potentially interested in a particular product. It's not humans making these decisions, it's artificial intelligence making these decisions. So for instance, going back to the example of somebody looking for a vegetarian restaurant, there are artificial intelligence prediction engines out there that have found for, that someone looking for a vegetarian restaurant might be more interested also in purchasing calcium supplements or Maybe they live in a certain zip code, and that artificial intelligence is then going to target them with those products or those services or show people in a particular zip code advertising related to vegetarian restaurants. So yes, you do need to understand that technology. But more to the point, you also need to just generally get a sense of what excites and interests consumers today across the board, across every aspect of the culture, so that you know what people are talking about, what they care about, and what influences are coming into their lives that make them think and act in a certain way. In order to be a successful consumer marketer, you really need to be a true Renaissance person. So if you have a wide range of interests, ranging from food to music to fashion, you're actually in luck because it's being that kind of Renaissance person that really makes you a successful marketer. But it isn't just about keeping your finger on the pulse of today's society. There's also a lot of tactics and scientific methods out there that help us as marketers understand the consumer. The science of market research is one of them, and we're going to talk more about that in this course. Some examples of market research in the modern age are social media listening or listening to the buzz around a particular product or type of product. For instance, you might be seeing on Twitter a lot of discussion lately about a, self-driving cars, which again are a form of artificial intelligence driven car, but also green cars in general. France is soon going to ban cars that have regular internal combustion engines and go all electronic. The Tesla is becoming more affordable and more popular. So if you listen on social media and you're in charge of marketing cars, you now know that electronic and environmentally safe cars are the latest trend. And if one of your products in your product line is more environmentally friendly, you know that's the kind of thing that people care about. 
That's one example of social media listening, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in this course. Consumer feedback directly from your consumers is another really important factor in understanding the why of the buy. In other words, directly surveying your consumers, taking notes of calls, tweets, and messages that you get, praising your product, or asking for improvements or complaining. All of that direct feedback is something that needs to be analyzed, kept track of, and dealt with in a systematic way. And we're also going to talk about that. And this might be the most fun part, of understanding consumers listening to the trends. If you want to be a successful consumer marketer, you want to have a varied media diet. Look for things off the beaten track. Make sure that you follow those creative tumblers. Make sure that you check out those bands that everyone's talking about that haven't even dropped their first album yet. Make sure that you are looking at both the mainstream of what's happening in the media, but also keeping your eye on the next greatest thing. Because if you want to be a successful consumer marketer, you really have to start to learn the art of buzz. In other words, generating positive buzz around particular products so that they catch on. Keeping your finger on the pulse of what people care about is the first step. We're also going to talk in this class about how to take that understanding of what your consumers care about and put it into action. We're going to learn about traditional PR, in other words, getting the mainstream media to cover your new product or service so that you could potentially reach millions of people. But we're also going to talk about other ways of generating buzz. We're going to look at TV advertising, which is very expensive but can reach a large number of people. And then we're going to take it down to the personal level about how people are generating buzz on Snapchat and Instagram as well as look at sort of the middle of the road at mainstream magazines as well as specialty magazines and how both advertising and getting the media to write about your product can really make it take off. But we're not going to talk just about conventional media channels or just social media. We're going to talk about many of the new ways of creating buzz. For instance, influencers. Those are the Instagram and Snapchat celebrities who may not be world famous, but who have 500,000, a million followers who follow them specifically because they're a regular accessible person who has cool outfit ideas or a great um, fashion tutorial series or makeup tutorial series that makes people really relate to them be specifically because they're not a celebrity. We're also going to talk about things like street teams or product creators who actually step up and lead and speak for their own product as their own representative. There's a lot of new ways of generating buzz and we're going to talk about all of them as well as looking at the traditional channels. Because at the end of the day, the real way to create buzz is to be out there on multiple channels at once as aggressively and forthrightly as you can be with creative approaches and creative content. Later on in this course, we're actually going to learn how to create ads on social media for our different brands, as well as look at things that can grow organically through influencers. So let's get started. This week, what we're going to do is look at the buzz around us. Think about the trends. Think about the information that is being made available to us in the media. We're going to do in our weekly discussion, we're going to identify a brand in the news that's being talked about. And we're going to look at it from multiple angles. We're going to see what the business press has to say about that brand, but we're also going to look and see what the fashion press that's speaking to the consumer directly is saying about that brand. That's one thing that you can do this week that's part of your weekly set of assignments to start looking at how buzz works and how buzz influences consumers to make specific purchases. But don't stop there. Really take this week as a time to creatively explore how you yourself work and function as a consumer. Create vision boards of products that you dream of buying or dream of creating. Curate content from different sources. And curate just means gathering together content from different sources that you particularly like and appreciate and putting them together so that others can like and appreciate it themselves. It can be anything from retweeting a tweet you particularly found appealing to 
creating collage of images that you like. Make sure, however, overall to listen to the buzz around products around you and think about where that buzz came from. Was it artificially created or did it really come up from the grassroots because people liked and appreciated the product? And what is the difference between artificially created buzz and buzz that really is coming from happy consumers? On a tactical level, make sure that you read the chapters and the assigned readings for the week and join in the two conversations that are starting this week. First of all, introduce yourself in the Introduce Yourself thread and also then jump in into the conversation about the buzz in the news around some of your favorite products. And of course, work on Assignment 1. So that's the overview of what Buzz is, why it's important, and a little bit about what we're going to be learning in this class as we explore consumer mindsets, consumer research, and the why of the buy.